Hey everyone, welcome to this video in the hand calculation series. In this one, we are going to be discussing the Maynard F factor. So we can start with a mathematical definition of the Maynard factor, or F for short, and this is the mathematical definition here. It's just a product of two different inverse square corrections, and it seems kind of arbitrary at first, um, but we are actually going to derive this factor a little bit later in the video, which I think will be helpful. Uh, kind of understanding where these two terms come from and, you know, why they're important. So what, what can we actually use F for and why is it important to know the definition of it and why we can use it? Well, we can use it to convert a PDD that is measured from one SSD to another. And so in that way, we can apply the PDD calculation formalism to any SSD by just using this Maynard F factor. Another thing we can use it for is to convert a PDD to a TMR. So that will make acquiring your beam data a little bit more simple because you can just measure the PDD and then convert it to a TMR using the Maynard F factor. So now we can derive the Maynard F factor and this is going to be very helpful in uh, seeing where that mathematical definition comes from. So I always like to start with drawing the geometry. On the left you can see we have some treatment set up here with the SSD not which is our original SSD, and then you can see the field size at the surface of R, and then the dose at a depth of D max, and then the dose at a different depth D. And on the right, we just kind of extend that SSD, so we move the source up, or equivalently, we can just move the phantom down. But I just want to point out that uh, the left and the right have the same field size at the surface, so that's, that's important to take note of here. And each of these specific scenarios has its own percent depth dose. So using the definition of the PDD, we can write down the definition here. And for the SSD not, it's just the ratio of those two doses. And then for the SSD, it's another ratio of those doses that are shown uh, in the figure on the left. So that's these are, this is just nothing crazy going on here. It's just the definition of the PDD. And now we can actually relate the dose in the figure on the right to the dose in the figure on the left using the inverse square law. So these are those relationships here. You can see that you start, the numerator is always where you started and the numerator is where you're moving to. So we always have SSD not in the numerator in this case. And this is just the equation for relating the dose on the right to the dose on the left using the inverse square law. So now that we have these relations, we can simply divide the bottom equation by the top equation. And what that's going to do is just give us the definition of the PDD at that new SSD. And you can see that D naught at a depth D divided by D naught at D max is simply the definition of the PDD for SSD naught. And then this the other terms, actually, that's the definition of the Maynard F factor that we saw previously. So if you actually carried out this uh, division by fractions, you would get the exact same thing that we saw previously for the definition of the Maynard F factor. So this is just an example of how we can convert one PDD at one SSD to another at an, another SSD using that Maynard F factor. There are other derivations that you can do, and there's a nice derivation in the context that you should go read through, but this is just one geometric uh, derivation that, you know, is easy to make sense of. So. I do want to talk a little bit more about F because there are some other important things I want to point out. One is that the derivation I just did actually ignored the differential scatter you get at different SSDs. If you go back and look at the figure that I presented of the geometry of how we derive this, uh, there actually you can see that we are irradiating different amounts of phantom. And so we actually get a different amount of phantom scatter that originates, which would alter our dose. Uh, but that effect is relatively small, likely within, you know, half a percent or so. So uh, we just ignored it. In addition, if our SSD is increased relative to our original SSD, the Maynard factor is greater than one. You can go prove this based on my previous derivation. Uh, but this just goes to show that your PDD will actually increase for the extended SSDs. On the contrary, if our SSD is shorter, then the Maynard factor is less than one and our PDD will actually decrease for a shorter SSD. So this all comes from that inverse square and you know how the doses are related at different SSDs. In addition, I also mentioned that we can convert the PDD to the TMR using the Maynard F factor and that's shown here. 
So this middle term here is actually part of the Maynard F factor, but when you actually go from PDD to TMR, uh, you need to do an inver another inverse square correction. And so uh, part of it actually ends up canceling out. So you're only left with part of the Maynard F factor here. And the TMR is also a situation where you can't ignore that differential scatter. So you also see the phantom scatter factors in here as well. But this is the equation that you can use to go from PDD to a TMR. And that's it for the Maynard F factor. So thank you for watching.